into handsome chunks. It doesn't really matter, as you'll see, because it's coming into a puree in the end. But so that it works well. So if you're ever tempted to say, it's hard labor to scrape things, then get a, get a scraper and get a knife which at, at 20 bucks. Um, and before, you, you've made up the difference between what would otherwise be raw vegetables cut up. And that's it. Have you got, have you got a question for me? Yes, Greg. Oh, I have a question. Thank you. Hello. I would love to know, what got you into cooking in the first place? Cooking in the first place? Um, uh, this did. I, my dad um, got me by the ear. Who asked the question? It was somebody from the chat. Pun? Somebody from the chat. Yes, I know that, but what's her name? Uh, I'm not sure. Oh, <laughs> hello, <laughs> not sure. Uh, but you know who you are. Um, just try your name so that I can get personal, all right? So this was what happened to me. I was about 10 or 11 years of age. And I felt fingers come round my ear. And I looked round, and it was my dad. And my dad said, my boy, you cannot talk to the customers in the bar like this. You, it's not only is it boring them, but it's also illegal. So come with me, my son. And he took me through to the chef, who was from Provence in the southern part of France. And he said, Chef, my son is playing with the customers in the bar and, you know, they can't have that. Can you find a place for him to do something in the kitchen? Oh, monsieur, yes, I can do these, sir. So he got a, an, an orange box and he made this sturdy orange box in those days. And he said, he got, hello, uh, now what I do is give you a small knife, a very petite knife like this and uh, uh, you punch your fingers like this, I want you to chop. And so I began to chop, and I played in the kitchen. Do you know what they say now, the experts say in, in life and feeding life? It's called P3. First thing is play. If you like to play at something, if you have fun doing it, okay, fun. Like I'm having fun now. I am. I'm playing now. All right. So I played there in the kitchen and the chefs would come. Oh, look at the little master. At least I think that's what they were calling me. And uh, so I would chop and they'd go oh, 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 like this. So I started at a very age sort of chopping and being laughed at. Um, and then the second P is passion and the third P is purpose. But, you know, we'll talk about that a bit later on. So that's how I started in the kitchen. And that one thing led to another until I was actually working in the kitchen and being paid to do that. Then I went through to the dining room and I started to cook table side for people, which is extraordinary to go table side and cook for people and tell them a story whilst I was making a crepe Suzette or something like that. And that's where this comes from, my ability to be able to talk to you and see you as an individual whom I can cook something for and, um, and, and hopefully taste along with me at least, uh, you know, in theory. Does that make sense? Okay, let's get back. Um, so, so, we have here then water boiling under this colander. Now, let me add a bit more boiling water because we've been, I've been chatting away here. I have a system on my hot water system here in the house that delivers almost boiling water just right out of the tap. Um, it, I don't know how to describe it to any other way. It's just that it's hot. So this is almost boiling. Now, this is my old colander. It's kind of like a fencing mask. Um, <laughs> Well, it isn't. Um, and I've had this forever. I used to have the stack and steam, and you might have watched that during some of these um, programs that I've just been doing. And I don't know where they've gone. They've got lost. So here we have this, and that fits in there perfectly because the amount of water that I've got in there is about that much, and that's coming up underneath this. 
So I really want it to steam, and I really don't want it to boil. I don't want vitamins to boil out from it. You could use something like this, which adjusts to the size of the saucepan. The problem with this is these are always made with very low feet on it. So you can see you've only got that amount of water, and that can boil away very quickly before the steaming takes place. I actually got one of these once and put some longer stems on it, which is a good idea. Not easy to package. Okay, so I want to now place these, this diced, and this is the amount that extra that I needed so that it comes up to the full one pound. And you weigh it, you weigh the pound after you've peeled it. You need exactly a pound. All right. And that lid goes on to the top, and then this takes just on 18 minutes to be able to just increase the price. Of it. So I have a little timer here, my little flash of silver timer. 15, 16, 17, 18 minutes. I pop that up there, and that should come to the boil pretty quickly, and that should be just about right. Okay. So... This is for mac and cheese, and the reason why I've got this very red um, sweet potato is because I want to be able to achieve in the end a color which is somewhat reminiscent of mac and cheese, the ones that you get commercially. Right? And I want to, especially for young people who are going to be given this, perhaps, I wanted them to feel perfectly comfortable with what they see on their plate is really what they expect, um, what they're used to. Okay, so we'll now add um, I did this. Uh, that's that one there. Come on. So I want to get the heat up under this one. This also is going to be a boiling temperature one. Um, let, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I also lose lids every now and again. Do you lose your lid? Um, it, yeah, I understand. All right, now let's look at the pasta. Now, if I was to just dump a piece of, then let's have a, a real tight look at that one. This is elbow macaroni, you could say. And that's what you'd be looking for for a mac and cheese. It looks about right, but this is not made with um, durum semolina flour. This is made with rice, with brown rice. And because it's made with brown rice, it's a perfect way of dealing with it if you have a gluten problem. If there is anything like um, celiac disease in your life, about one in 100 people can possibly have this as a difficulty. Sometimes it's not a huge problem, but it's enough to say that you are frequently feel bloated, you frequently have Gosh, how does one talk about this on, on um, well, we're on the web, we're not on the air. So if you have loose bowels, mm, um, then this is, this is part and parcel of a difficulty absorbing nutrients through the small intestine. And it's, it is a major problem. You've probably seen in the store lots of gluten-free products. So I just wanted to use this because I doubted that you could get the same quality of texture um, uh, from brown rice things. Y you know, when, when low-fat things started, low-fat cheeses and things, they were awful. Um, but nowadays they've got better and better and better at doing these things, and I'm really thrilled about some of the quality in which they've done. So here, this is a thing called Tink Yada. I suppose if you thought of a television channel called Twitch, you might not have, that might not have been your very first choice, you know. <laughs> um, but I don't think Tink Yada would have been my very first choice um, for a product with um, gluten-free, but this is what they did. And it's really good. I've got to tell you, it's, it's interesting. Now, what I always do is when I get a new product, I always cut off 
the information about how it's prepared from the package and I keep that with the nutrition action label in the package with the product, okay? Now, what I need for this, I need, in order to be able to do this dish, I need to have the water boiling and it's just coming to the boil now. If you could look inside to that pot, but let me just pro promise you that this pot here is got little bubbles are rising vigorously to the surface. Hello? about to get your pasta. So, it's a cup and about a third. All right? That's what I need. 